Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we're coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy, happy Wooly Wednesday. Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday folks, wherever you are, we are watching you checking in today. I hope you've gathered your acorns because we are going to make some fabulous felt and fiber art acorns together. I have fallen in love with this project and had so much fun preparing for today's tutorial. And I really hope that you find it inspiring and that you'll take this idea to some new place. We're excited to share this day with you. Uh, we have some very special announcements and exciting news that we're going to share towards the end of the show. So I hope you'll stick around and we're going to share some other tutorials that you might be interested in as well. So if you're watching the live feed, thank you so much for being here. You know already everything's happening over here in the chat. Join in, chime in, share your ideas, ask your questions. You'll be entered to win prizes. If you're watching the replay, comment down below because you will also be entered to win prizes and we're just gonna have some fun together. And the fairies are here too, so it's a really fun day. Let's say hi to some folks. Hi to Yvonne all the way in the Netherlands. That's exciting. Jan Scott is in Canada. Always nice to have you here, dear. Uh, hi to our friend Judy and Linda and Jill. Diane is here. Marga is here. This is so fun, y'all is here with us, Tammy Daniels, Suzanne Cushing. Hi everyone, did you gather your acorns? Let us know in the chat, are you ready? Hi to Bonnie, hi to Barb, thanks y'all so much for being here. Okay, so we are going to be making a bunch of stuff together today. The fairies are here. They're gonna share with you some of the supplies you might consider for making your own acorns. So the first up is the very lovely fairy, Melissa. Hey everyone! So Marie's going to show us a variety of ways to create beautiful fall acorns and if you're needle felting you could use one of these two packs which this is the mixed studio pack which has six colors and is three ounces total and this if you're looking for a little bit more variety this is the uh, mixed goodie bag which has 12 colors and is also three ounces total as well. And next up is Fairy Katie. <laughs> Um, another good fall promotion that we're having right now is the Merino Short Fiber Goodie. It comes in nine colors and it's good for wet felting acorns or beads and um, you can do it with your grandkids or children um, and a link will be posted later. Who's next? <laughs> if you're looking to hand stitch acorns, like this lovely one right here, we offer a great range of fabrics with our Sari Party packs. If you want a warmer, cool color, you can't go wrong with one of these packs. <laughs> I just see a big round of hearts for the fairies. We, we force them to go on camera. <laughs> they do everything here. They make everything that we sell. They answer your calls. They answer your emails. They pack your orders and write those cute little notes. And sometimes they even sprinkle it with fairy dust. If you've been in the shop, you know that yourself. So these are our fairies and we'll be working with all of these supplies today, uh, except for the short fiber goodies. So those are all in our fall section. Uh, we do have a sale going on right now in our fall section. Actually, we pushed it early just for you because we're doing this fall project today. It was scheduled to start on Friday, but there is a coupon and you can save 15% off everything in our fall category. And that's relevant for this tutorial and our special news that we'll be sharing just a little bit later. So grab your acorns, grab your supplies, and let's make some stuff together. But the next to round us out is our fairy in the field, the very funny fairy, Kayla. Hi there, everyone. Happy Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> I hope you are all just as excited as we are. It's finally almost here. It is finally almost fall. <laughs> You can't see it, but my pumpkin spice candles are lit around and I am so ready for fall and I hope you are also ready for this fun fall project we're doing today. So I won't hold us any longer. I'll get right to the good stuff. <laughs> so which pumpkins can swim the best? Which pumpkins can swim the best? Well, that would be the Coast Gourd. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have fun today, and I'll see you in the next live hang. 
Thank you, Kayla. And thank you everyone for putting up with our silly jokes. We just like to have a good time no matter what we're doing, whether we're felting or filling boxes. It's all good fun for us. So thank you for joining in. We are going to kick off this project right now. The very first thing is to grab your acorns. I had a great time going out and gathering acorns. I have a huge stash. Those of you who know me know that already, but I gathered acorns now from my daily walks and these are both this year and last year's acorns. So you can see that some are really pretty and new. Some of them are even not quite ripe yet because we're losing a lot of stuff off our trees um, with our extreme drought that we're in. But um, some are actually old. They're kind of aged, they're kind of dark. And I want to encourage you to grab those acorns no matter their condition because we can prep them and clean them up and um, make them look really uniform and we'll be doing that together today. So gather the caps, gather the complete acorns, it doesn't matter, just bring them all inside and then we can look through them uh, to get prepared to make either what I call like a fiddle bowl, uh, which uh, we've made here, or our string of acorns. And I think Jordan shared both of those with you on the overview so you can make a fun garland. This would be a great project for kids, neighbors, girlfriends, family, or what I like is just this little fiddle bowl and that, or a jar. You could have this in a guest room. You can just have this around the house and honestly, any time of year. I shared with the crew that I was, I will, some of you know that I have these great big acorns. We have these great big acorns here. So let me touch on those real fast. These are from um, Burr Oak. And if you live in North America, there's a chance that there might be burr oak in your area. We have a little map here, and this is, tells you where there are burr oaks. And I never actually saw them before I came to Texas. I lived on the, or moved back to Texas, I should say. I lived on the West Coast. But I wanna give you some tips if you're hunting for acorns, or maybe you're not sure if you have uh, oak trees in your area. Oak trees actually have a variety of different types of leaves. We traditionally think of them as having those sort of pointy leaves, but they come in a variety of leaf structures. Jordan, oh, Jordan actually has a little graphic for us here that we stole from somebody, honestly. Tree hugger. <laughs> from tree hugger. So we're used to like this traditional pointy leaf that we see up in the top, but there are other oaks that have different shapes. Some even have like serrated leaves or they tend to be more elongated. And if you're not sure whether you have oak trees in your area, look more at the ground maybe even than the trees. But if you're looking for burr oaks and you're not sure whether you have a burr oak, these are um, from my personal tree. Uh, you can tell how bad the drought is here because these fell off this year and they were marvelously green in spring. And these aren't even the biggest leaves that come off that, this tree in front of my um, home. But a burr oak has these rounded lobes and they tend to be bigger at the end of the leaf and more narrow where they join the branch. So look for burr oak. It's in the white oak family. And in the burr oak, you get these little furry acorn caps. Um, sometimes they're closed, uh, they don't look quite as furry, but look for those because they're available. That's if you want the big ones. If you can't get them, you can buy acorns of all sizes on Amazon or Etsy, or maybe you have a friend who will share some with you, but get your acorns together. And once I have all my acorns, I like to sort them out and then clean them. So I start by cleaning them just by getting a fresh dish to sort them in and give them a good look to take out the broken ones and the ones that are just maybe too tiny for this project. And look through there, and if you have some acorn caps that you're not sure whether they'll separate, you might put those in the freezer. So just sort through your acorn caps, get rid of the ones you think are absolutely no-go or they're broken, cherish all the doubles or sometimes even triples, those are fun. And then what we're going to do is clean them up with just a little bristle brush. I actually buy these natural bristle toothbrushes and these are great in the craft room as well. And brush off all the dirt. You can wash these and dry them in the sun. You can put them in the freezer if you're worried about um, any little larva or any little critters. And Jordan was actually telling me that um, people who keep snakes actually bake their acorn caps to get rid of all kinds of parasites or bugs or whatever. But just clean them up and get them all sorted so that you're happy with them. 
once all your sorting is done, then we can choose the ones that you want to go together. Um, and I like to pre-drill holes for a garland. I got this fantastic wireless, it's like a wireless rotary cutter tool, a slashy drill. Comes with a bunch of drill bits and a bunch of little um, parts. And I got it on Amazon, so I share that if you go to the supplies page or the landing page for today's video that'll be in the description you'll see the other resources it's like 23 bucks i love this thing but drill the holes on the like two holes if you're going to string a garland on the opposite side of that little stem where the acorn comes off of the branch or twig and i do this part before uh any other treatment just because it's is kind of the dirty part. I like to get all the dirty bits done as well. So drill your little holes and if you drill them this way then they'll hang in a nice string. The other way would be if you want to hang them down in a row then you could just put one hole. So I love that little tool that's fantastic and then I want to uh, string these up. So I painted these acorn caps so that they would all match in order to prep them for painting, I tried two different methods, and one was to string them in advance. So I'm just using an embroidery thread and stringing them all up so that I can paint them suspended and hopefully paint as much of the cap as possible by doing this pre-stringing. But I'll, I'll show you both ways. Um, both ways that I painted them. So get them all strung up, and what I like is that now you can handle all your acorns in one fell swoop versus fussing with each one individually. I just took a couple of popsicle sticks and notched them out so that I would be able to clamp down these strings on either end and suspend it in a box for painting. So I don't know if any of these steps are really necessary. This is just kind of what I tried on the first go around. I've never had never painted my acorn caps before. So here you can see I'm just using an old paper box and I've suspended the acorns all the way across and this gives me a little paint booth if you will and uh, I think we'll show you the paint in a minute. I chose this hammered sort of copper and what I wanted was all of the acorns to look as much alike as possible and this is the result of my little stringing painting. You, I see several of my, couple of my acorn caps are upside down and obviously you want to fix that in advance. It was a pretty windy day, so I tried a second method, which is laying all the acorn caps flat down and I weighed my box down with some stones in each corner. Um, and then I painted all my acorn caps just straight down. I tried some with a clear acrylic and um, then the rest I painted again with my sort of hammered copper paint. And I definitely liked the color, the hammered copper, the best. Uh, I think that those acorns look the best. And actually painting them flat was pretty darn easy. So both work, and here's what my acorn caps look like. The ones on the very left over there were only with the clear acrylic. So choose something that works for you. And then here's the little string of acorns that I painted as well. I really like how uniform they all were. And here's the paints I used, a Rust-Oleum hammered and then the uh, satin clear enamel. They both dry really quickly. And then this summer, like how long does it take anything to dry? It's so, <laughs> it's so hot where we are right now. So I really like both of those. Anyone sharing anything in chat so far, Jordan, of other things they've used? Uh, they're sharing about their acorns. Some people in Arizona have too tiny of acorns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But we did have a question of how to keep them from getting moldy. Somebody had mold with burr acorns before. The, the reason they get moldy is if you put them like in an airtight container and they still have moisture in them. I had the same thing happen. I took, uh, I gather lots of acorns. <laughs> in fact, I made my husband stop bringing them home at some point because I didn't have space for all of them. But I had done the same thing and I put them in a jar with an airtight lid and that's when they got moldy. So instead, you can dry them out like in a brown paper bag or I use like old photo boxes that are just cardboard. I put them all in there. We have bajillions of acorns in my house and they don't get moldy as long as, you know, they're able to just air out. So don't put them airtight until they're really, really dry. Yeah. Any, anything else on that? 
Okay, cool. Not too much. All right, so as uh, the, the crew shared, we're gonna look at a few ways to make your acorns, and one way is just to needle felt them. Many of you already know how to do this, but for all our friends who are just getting started, this would be a really fun project to share with them, a great project to do with the kids or whomever. And uh, needle felting them, you can just make a bead or you can make the, the tip pointy if you want. So today we're working with wool batting. You can use MC1 if you have it, you can use Maori, you can use Bergschaft. Any colors will work. I love all manner of colors in my fall, including purples and berries and stuff. So just take a tiny strip. You don't have to know how much. You'll see whether you have too much or too little really fast. And we're just going to make it like we do a bead. Start with a little strip. You make a tube, make it very tight, tuck in the ends, tuck in the ends, and make a little ball. And stop when you think you're just about the size you're going to need. And I'm just gonna be using our, you could use fine needles or medium needles. And this is such a small little thing to get a hold of. Sorry, I'm trying to find the right, thank you, Jordan, mm -hmm. trying to get me on the, um, this is such a small little, a little bead, but grab onto it before it gets too far and just poke it into place. Now this is a really um, coarse needle and what you'll see is if you use a really coarse needle, it's going to leave holes. So only use it on the under parts and then maybe you can go ahead and just jump to your fine needles. All we need to do is make a little bead and because you're making an acorn, you can let it be a little bit oblong and you can let one end be a little bit bigger than the other. I'm gonna stop right there. It can be oblong because you're gonna bury it in some kind of acorn cap. Yours might be deep, they might be shallow. We'll look at a few together here in a minute. But be free about this and don't worry about it too much. The only thing I would say is watch your fingers. Try not to, these are small parts, so this would be something not to have your eyes glued to Great British Bake Off. <laughs> you want to pay attention at least when your needle is moving and you can see that my piece is still fairly loose and what we'll do is we can start to shape see this part still sorry this part's still squishy I'm trying to find the right camera this part's still kind of squishy now's the perfect time to shake to shape that and make it pointed so I like to just tip it right down onto my mat this would have been a great place to have my little wowie topper huh? uh, on my mat and just start poking that before it gets too firm. All we did was tack the wool down and get it into a basic shape and now you can make this pointed. You know, they don't have to be pointed. They can be rounded. They can be just oblong. So have fun with that and don't get too uh, caught up on the shape. I think the only thing is you're gonna want them to fit inside the acorn caps that you've chosen. Sorry, I keep going up on my... Penny Gray suggests painting the caps in bright colors. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. Well, it, it would really be fun if you painted the caps in maybe like bright colors and then all the acorns were one color. Mm, you know, yeah. that could be a fun way to do it too, just to so they don't clash and you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to try and match them too much. So needle felting an acorn, honestly, y'all, the little bits is just as simple as this. Using fine needles is totally fine. And all you want is for them to fit your caps. And caps come in tons of shapes. So if yours need to be smaller, and I do have some very small ones here, I'll, I'll bring those out, you can, or you can make them rounded. So here's some beads. The other thing is, is you can make some acorns and some beads and use the beads as spacers. That's totally an option. And these can be just as pointy as you want. So looking here in my dish, I might, oh, sorry, Jordan, sorry. Uh, uh, looking here in my dish, I'm gonna find something that fits, that fits this shape. Maybe that one's too tight, too small. Here's one, oh, this one's kind of tight too. How interesting. Um, let's see. 
This is a pretty good one right here. So this is a nice one. And then we can just find the ones that fit. And what I do is I kind of pair them together as I go. So needle felting is pretty simple and you might consider also just needle felting beads as spacers or you could just needle felt beads and let them all be round. I think it looks just as cute for it to be round as it is when they're pointy and there's no real rules there. So you can needle felt your shapes. And the other thing is, as um, Katie mentioned, if you're working with little ones, you can wet felt your beads. Now we have a video that we did a few years back. It's been really popular because you can wet felt a lot of beads fast and pretty much that's what we call the video. We modified our methods by watching how amazingly these women in Nepal make these felt bead rugs and we developed a way that we can wet felt a lot of beads basically in-house without doing the magnitude of what they do. This is a whole video you can watch and we're linking to it, I think probably in the chat and the description, uh, or at least in the description. And you can do this with kids, you can do this with a family party. I have done these wet felting bead projects in a class where we actually, everybody preps their beads, we all, by sort of wrapping them and needle felting them like I show you, and then we pass the bowl around the table as we're <laughs> working, and people are also felting by hand. So it's a really fun project, and the short fiber merino goodie pack is going to be the one you want. Um, either the multicolor, uh, we have just a regular, or we have the fall pack now, and again, that's in the fall section, and that'd be a great way to do it. Any contributions there, Jordan? Uh, I'm catching up. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love the look of the hammered bronze. A few people are asking what fiber you're using. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll repeat that. We are using today, I, I chose fibers from the um, mixed bag studio pack. So this is Bergschaff and Maori. Um, and we also have a mixed bag studio pack, uh, which has six colors. That was what Melissa showed you, as well as the goodie pack has like 12 colors in it. So lots of variety to choose from there. Now the thing that really kicked off this project, we've done acorns before and we've needle felted beads uh, a ton of times, but I was sharing with Jordan that I was looking at one of my magazines, you know, you buy something and you get these other magazines. I forget what it was. It could have been, well, I won't name it, but <laughs> anyway, it was a, a magazine that caters to women's clothes and also shows uh, home textiles as well. And they had burr oak acorns made with velvet and they were selling three for $79, Ooh. 79 bucks. And I'm like, you know what, we, we have this. Like, it doesn't matter whether you make them big or make them little, we can make beautiful textile fiber art acorns with the stuff that we have. So this is like my little fiddle bowl. It has uh, needle felted acorns in it. We also used our sari silk fabrics. And then I also used this faux velvet, uh, which if anyone is in our subscription box, this box is already accounted for, you're gonna get some of this fabric. So let me show you, you can, this is gonna be a great scrap buster project. Here's just a look at some of the fabrics. This is my uh, faux velvet. These are the three colors that are in the box, which hasn't shipped yet. So that is, what do you call that when you reveal something? Uh, uh, spoiler. Spoiler, there's your spoiler. <laughs> you're gonna get that. And then the sorry silk fabrics, any little scraps will do, even scraps this tiny. So we're always telling you like, don't throw away your scraps. What you wanna do is get your scrap fabric and I'm gonna show you how small you can get on these circles. So all of these little scraps are fantastic. And here are my very, very fancy and elaborate templates. <laughs> I have my uh, floral tape, the center of that. I have my three inch mason jar lid and I have my you know, mini mason jar lid. These are my templates. So if you have scraps as small as this, and someone's, I told you someone's gonna ask us for inches and I didn't get them, Jordan. I wanna say that that's uh, two inches or an inch and three quarters, I think. And this is a, probably a three inch circle. So these little tiny circles will make either these uh, little tiny acorns and we'll do that together, or um, this is this would be a medium acorn right here. That's a medium acorn. This is a tiny acorn, and this right here is like a jumbo a jumbo acorn. If that helps you, so you can see that's going to be the biggest circle that I made. 
a medium circle. We'll change up the colors. Here's two medium circles right here attached on this guy. So you don't need a lot of fabric. And man, this is so, so, so easy. So get your scraps, get a pin, trace around whatever's your inner shape and get yourself some circles. So here are my circles of fabric. Um, I tried two different methods on the bigger ones. I used a little bit of quilt batting inside because I didn't want the fabrics to overly wrinkle. You don't have to do that. On the little ones, I use nothing but the silk. So these are my, my smallest circles. To make these, we use a gather stitch. It's not any more compli complicated than that. And a gather stitch, you're going to basically create a drawstring right you're going to create a drawstring so you're going to come up if there's an innie and an outie you want your fabric to your thread to come from the side that you want out okay whatever's going to be outside mine you can't really tell but this one is embroidered and that's the side with the embroidery and this is the back of the stitch so i would run it in the same direction the needle from the face to the inside when you come through you want to leave yourself a little tail let me get my thread. Um, okay, you just want to leave yourself a little tail so that you can do the stretching, tie that knot. And I probably should have chosen a contrasting thread and fabric, huh, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> All we're gonna do is go in and out. A gather stitch is nothing but in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out all the way around the very perimeter of the circle. Pause once in a while and pull it so your thread doesn't get uh, tied up on itself. But work your way all the way around the circle. Sorry, work your way all the way around the circle, in and out, in and out, in and out, just like this. It doesn't take that long, but on camera, everything takes a century. Mm -hmm. So uh, run your thread all the way around, and I'm gonna pause and jump to one that I already have done, and it's right here, and snip your threads. So this one, we've just run our stitch all the way around, and you're gonna come back together um, you're just going to come out right about where you came in. So I'm just leaving a tiny little space. And then I put my finger on the inside and just pull. All you have to do is pull and now you can put your finger in there and all you have now you have this beautiful little bonnet, if you will. It's like a little bonnet. And we stuff the bonnet. I used core wool on mine because it was next to my desk. You could use polyfill. Uh, whatever you have. You can pre-needle felt the shapes if you want. I've done both. I've needle felted them and not needle felted them. What you find if it's not very tight that the ball will squish down a little bit more and sometimes that makes it just a little bit easier for tying off and you could also just tack it down real quick if you want. We'll do that just for just to make it easy and not come apart. We'll just tack it for the moment to be in place. Okay, so that's all we need is something loose because the, the fibers are gonna squish it down. And if you have too much fiber, you'll know, but it doesn't matter all that much because you can squish it in. I was telling the, the crew that the hard part is tying the knot because it wants to get away from you. Um, it doesn't kind of wanna stay. So you're gonna have to tie a knot. And if anyone has an easy way to you know, hold that tension and do it by themselves and let me know, but. That's what I always just try and do is every time I do it, I try and find a better way to do it. <laughs> like, honestly, with every single acorn, what if I try this? What if I try that? Sometimes I just, I tried a clamp from my husband. I tried poking a needle through. So if you want to come and sit next to me, we can hold each other's acorns while we tie our <laughs> knots. <laughs> That's what the acorn party would be for. So now I'm squished it. You just have to hold that tension and then tie it off. And the bottom does not need to be closed all the way because it's going to be hidden inside your acorn. And there you go. It's okay if it's a little bit like that. You can see this is pretty tight. It's going to look adorable inside of our acorn and you can make a bunch of these. You can pre-make them like we did. So we pre-made them with our two kinds of fabric and needle felting. And once you have a couple of bowls ready for your all your acorns and then all of your little acorn, acorns, acorn calves and acorns, then you can assemble 
if you are going to be just making a fiddle bowl like this and not uh, a garland, then all you have to do is glue them. So I used my um, favorite silicone glue that has become my new go-to, doesn't smell like anything, dries really fast, works great on fiber and fabric and wood and acorns to boot. <laughs> so this stuff does dry really fast and I found that I needed to apply it to each cap or to each acorn and get it in the acorn. I, I found that I couldn't like create a puddle because it formed a skin too quickly. So it doesn't smell it's fabulous it's a little more expensive if you have a slower drying glue then make a puddle um, or glue up a, a bunch of caps at once and then fill them but with this particular glue you kind of have to go one and one and one and one and that's all I do is just glue them right in and that's how I made this amazing little fiddle bowl which I'll probably never ever 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 put away I'll just <laughs> add to it over and over because I love it so much so if it's really deep, if your acorn cap is really deep, then what you can do is just apply the glue to the fabric and do it right where it's gonna to attach to the walls as opposed to the bottom because you don't even need to squish it all the way down. So glue it to the sides and there you go. Then you can build your jar or your fiddle bowl. Does someone have another name for that? Is there another? I mean, I just made that up, but it's because I always, I have to touch everything that's in front of me. And I love just picking these up and uh, playing with them. I was telling Jordan that my mom who passed away some years back uh, would smack my hands because I would always fiddle with everything that was on her tables. And so this is my guilt-free fiddle bowl. You can just pick it up and fiddle with it. But if you're not just making a bowl and you want to make a garland, there is a way to approach it you know so it's a little bit easier now um I, if you string them up before you paint them you might think well i'll just use that string i thought i was going to do that but i liked uh, the thinness of this particular embroidery floss this yellow um, but I didn't like how it looked with paint on it, so I went ahead and re-strung them all in order to make the garland. So let's make the garland together. Oh, uh, sorry, Judy Phillips asked real quick, would hot glue work? Yes, hot glue works great, Judy. Absolutely, it does. Um, cool, that was it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Oh, uh, wait, uh, yeah, I wanna ask her, Ar Audrey, really quick, because we talked about sewing. So Audrey, the rough size of each piece of fabric in the sari silk, the Sari Silk Party Packs are 10 different fabrics, and I think they're like 11 by 18 cuts of each piece of fabric. It will say on the webpage, so if I got that wrong, and that's approximate, it's not gonna be guaranteed because we split the widths and the lengths of each Sari, and they can vary slightly, but that's what we shoot for. It could be as small as nine inches wide, but that gives you an idea. Okay. And the glue, is that on the external links? It is. List? It's awesome. on, it's, I call it shared resources and I get it on Amazon, but you'll find it on there. It's nice. my silicone glue. A lot of yeah. people were asking about it. <laughs> yeah. I'd put my name on that glue. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay. Let's go to uh, making the garland. I do like to pre-plan the garland. Which acorns go with which caps and what order do I want them? If you're going to be using spacer beads, get them in the row as well, because you kind of want to knock this all out in one fell swoop and um, basically string and glue and string and glue or string, 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 glue, 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 and that's what we're going to do. So I've planned them all out and this shows you what they're going to look like on the string I have them all prepared and you need to go from the outside of the acorn to the in and then from the in to the out and this is how it's going to string for you. So you're always running your string first from the outside and I like to prepare, I don't know, like five or six as many as I can sort of manage in the moment. And again, we restrung them because I wanted a clean string as opposed to one with some paint on it. And once you have these all queued up, then I like to glue them. Now, what I learned in this process was um, with this particular glue, glue, which dries so quickly and is quite tacky, that doing multiple caps wasn't actually the most efficient way. Doing multiple caps with glue in advance because it would stick to my fingers and it would stick to each other. So I found that it was more efficient to glue a cap, insert the acorn, glue a cap, insert the acorn. 
If I was using something like Aileen's fabric glue or some kind of white PVA glue, surely I would just go make a puddle. I would just make a puddle on my table and dip the acorns in them. You can't do with that with this glue. It dries too fast and gets kind of, um, forms a skin, so you can't do that. So the only other thing is adjust your spacing. If you have a fast drying glue or like you're using a hot glue gun, it's gonna dry pretty fast. You need to adjust the spacing before you get too far because uh, it'll get stuck there on the string. But now you have this fun garland that you can hang, you could work it into a wreath, you can, I don't know, what would you do with it? What would you do with this garland? Any, any ideas? What are I, people gonna do with them? I would put it on, I'd, I'd make a small one and make it like the end of a chain pole for a fan or something oh, like cute. that. Oh, yeah. cute, that's a really cute idea. That's a, that's a nice thing to do with it. Yeah, you could hang them anywhere. I love that it's mixed, the needle felting and the different types of fabric. You could certainly work in other types of fabric. Um, it does become pretty permanent, you know, with you once you insert the glue. So that's the only thing to think about is the string. If you ever plan to take it apart, is you might use a little bit of a weaker glue than I chose. Um, but there, you know, there are other things you can do with these as well. So the thing I was thinking about really was a Thanksgiving table, which is the first place that I ever used. Um, these burr oak acorns and it was when we first moved to our home here in Texas and I found all these burr oak acorns. I was just, one, I pick up all kinds of stuff off the ground, but this was like an amazing treasure. Um, and so I just put those burr oak acorns right on our Thanksgiving table. And so that immediately made me think of making something like a maybe a napkin ring and this one I just glued the three different kinds of acorns together that we made and I used some artificial leaves which I actually robbed off of one of my fall wreaths. <laughs> I used this grapevine wire which are going to be used in an upcoming tutorial and uh, just these little orange beads as well. So all of it's faux except for the acorn caps but I think that these would make nice little napkin rings maybe uh, good for like a candle, you know, putting around the base of a candle or a vase or something on your Thanksgiving table. Or you could build a whole wreath, you know, just with these things. So I really look forward to seeing what you do with them or what your ideas are. And are people sharing anything over in the chat of what they would do with them? A few. It's catching up. Um, Penny asks, how would you store the garland from keeping it tangled, getting tangled? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I suppose, if you know, it's me. So, like, I rarely put stuff that I really love away. <laughs> but um, what you could do is put it around something. So if you're putting things away, like if you're putting it in a box, you could use the bottom of a, um, you could use the bottom of like an oatmeal carton and put it around there or you could use the, th the threads like we have and you know secure it on two ends of two ends of something like a piece of cardboard and put that mm -hmm. into like a flat storage bin. I think there's lots of options. Using the string is going to be key from keeping it from getting tangled and that way if you can stretch it in its length or wrap it around something like a bobbin uh, to keep it from going over on top of itself that would that would help. We have some great ideas coming in, so okay. a necklace. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm down. <laughs> I'm totally down. What uh, else? A headband or hair okay. decoration. Okay, yes. And I'm then, of course, on the fireplace, mantle. Okay. Uh, of course, napkin rings are popular. Yeah. And, uh, that's what I see so far. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, I hope that you'll make some needle felted acorns. I hope you'll turn on a friend, maybe have an acorn party. You could do all these things in one session, even just the needle felting and the stitching or the wet felting and stitching. So many things to do. We have lots of other fall projects for you to check out, and I have some important announcements, so hang in here with us. Um, we have now a fall playlist right here on our YouTube channel. And if you go to our webpage and you click on learn, you can click on the Wooly Wednesday archives and we have a fall playlist and a holiday playlist queued up for you right now. So you don't have to hunt, you can find our fall projects. So those are some quick links for everything we shared in today's show. You're gonna wanna click on the supplies list and you'll see a whole host of fibers you can use. And remember the coupon, um, falling for fall 23, you can save 15% off everything in that fall category. So do, we put that early for you guys. 
And uh, we have some really fun projects coming up this year. So if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I want you to encourage you to do so right now and to show you how much I mean it. We have prepared a couple of teasers for you so you can see some amazing projects coming up with very special guests. And our guest immediately is Joyce Haslerig. You'll know her from the Dragon tutorial on feldingtutorials.com. She has come into the studio this year and shared her adorable projects. This one is the pan people, which I fell in love with. I had to make my own. Oh yes, there will be kits. You're going to love this project. Joyce shares with you how she brings these charming little beings to life and how you can make them stand. Oh, and look, the burr oaks reappear. So you're gonna wanna check out that video, but that's not all. She's going to be our very first solo guest and share with you this fantastic fantastic like headband fall garland it's so delightful there are so many options for what you can do with what she teaches you in this class you could make a wreath you can make a headband maybe you could make that necklace or your centerpiece wraps so many things and look the fairy lights are part of it so you're going to want to check out that tutorial she's going to share multiple techniques and those are coming up this fall. We have more fall tutorials as well right here on YouTube, but some of you have been waiting uh, eagerly for a new class on feltingtutorials.com and thank you Jordan for really working, making it happen. She has launched the early bird signups today and that class and the others in the school all are on sale. Kimberly Zarr came in and filmed this extreme faces class. Look, she puts them on her pumpkins, her gourds. They are delightful and charming. You're going to learn so much from this class. If you are needle felting dolls, character dolls, or portraiture dolls of any kind, you are going to love this class because she's going to teach you not only how to get these great expressions, but how to do so while creating really, really firm needle felts. And if you want more on that, she was my guest earlier this year and we talked about needle felting firmly, so watch that. Now, uh, Jordan, you have something, so Jordan has something prepped for us. If you think you want to uh, do Jordan, I'm uh, sorry, if you want to do that garland headband or, you know, centerpiece wreath type thing that Joyce shares, you're going to want to watch this video, which is our wet felting autumn leaves, because Joyce built off of that tutorial to create parts of her project. So this is a really fun project. It's easy for anyone to do. We do offer a kit if you want to work with the same fibers I worked with in this video. And oh look, am I wearing the same shirt? Is I'm wearing the same? <laughs> I think I'm wearing the same shirt. So that's fun. It's fall, y'all, or we want it to be here at, you know, 106 or 2 today, whatever it is, something else. So check out the fall leaves video. You're going to want to check that out. We also opened the fall shop today, as I mentioned. So fall, 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 y'all, let's play together. There's so much to do. Was there something else I know we need we to give away? We have some BFF creations. Okay, we're going to share some BFF creations. Uh, y'all stick around. We're also going to draw some prizes. So let's look at some of the things that y'all have made this year with us. We love seeing them. Oh, this is such a sweet landscape. I'm not going to be able to read names because I can't see them on my screen. But let's just ooh and awe together and marvel <laughs> over all the things y'all have made. Oh, who doesn't love a pumpkin? Boy, that's a fantastic pumpkin right there. So vibrant and full of life. Oh, and our needle felting gnomes. We have fun fall gnomes and that's ginger beard and fall gnome as well. Uh, look at this hat. Wow, that almost looks like a hat that we were gifted a few years back that we still have. So fun. And there's the autumn leaves right there, part of the project. More fall leaves. It's so great how you can add stitching and break up the colors as well. I see another fall gnome coming along. You can get this gnome kit with a dyed beard or like a green beard or a bright colored green beard or brown colored beard, something like that different options. Oh, and this is our pumpkin talk pillows. That is a project, a kit and a project and the panion one next to it as well. One of my favorite fall banners. I really love this one. I remember when it came out. So, so cute. Oh, look at that. So pretty. So festive, huh, Jordan? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Lots of beads and berries. And oh, one of my favorite, Tracy McCracken Palmer. This is an oldie but a goodie. I love this piece. So we hope that y'all will share with us the projects that you're making. These are shared in our Facebook group, Living Felt Friends. You can also tag us on Instagram, hashtag Living Felt, so we can see what you're up to. And you might just get featured on the show. I know we want to give away some prizes, right? Jordan's been writing down some mm -hmm. names. What should we give away? A fall goodie? Some good pets. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we're going to give away um, two of our fall goodies right now that we shared. And we'll let you choose. You can either choose the wet felting uh, goodie or the needle felting. So the mixed bag studio pack or the short fiber merino. And here we go. Our winners today uh, for the live. Make sure you comment down below for the post show. We have Suzanne Cushing. <clears throat> congratulations. And Karen Lewis. So congratulations y'all. Reach out to us on the contact us page and let us know which you prefer. We'll get those out to you. And until then, Go sign up for the Extreme Faces class. You know you want to. Subscribe so you catch all these fall tutorials. And we're going to be back with even more fun fall projects later in the year. Watch the Learn page and you'll know when our next show is. Until then, be good to yourselves. Keep dreaming of fall and cooler weather. We are too. Bye, y'all. Thanks.